Hello there, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today, I want to talk about the issue of social anxiety. I'm kind of surprised I haven't done a video on this before. I've got like 400 on uh, videos on YouTube and not one on social anxiety. And so I thought I'd kind of give you my thoughts on that. It's a big problem for a lot of folks. They find themselves having trouble going to parties or interacting with strangers or just kind of feeling just that inability to feel confident in themselves in a social situation, which is really problematic because being social is part of kind of what we do. You know, it's part of what makes us human. It's one of the things that uh, people look for in terms of wellness and well-being. When I looked at the uh, Mayo Clinic uh, website on social anxiety, they described it as fear of being judged, fear of making mistakes, humiliating ourselves, um, kind of the tendency to be hypercritical of ourselves when we do make some little misstep and then create an expectation of this is gonna happen again. And that all leads to avoidance of social situations, which again has us feeling isolated and, and like there's something wrong with us. There's a quote that I have on my website that says, when our purpose becomes avoidance, our life becomes a void. And I think that's the challenge with social anxiety is that tendency to try to deal with the problem through fear or avoidance creates this void, creates this kind of a hole in our life where we're not feeling good about who we are, we're really not connecting with people the way we would say, you know, recommend to someone we love. So what I like to do is look at, okay, why is... The, the way that normal folks talk about dealing with social anxiety is so problematic because a lot of people say, hey, listen, you know, there's really nothing to be afraid of. And, uh, you know, you just basically tell yourself you're OK. Or, or another way that people talk about it is, listen, if you don't get over this social anxiety, man, you're never going to be able to meet people or, or have a successful job. And I think neither one of those are particularly effective kind of just get over it because there's really nothing to be afraid of goes, well, that's not what I experienced because when we experience social anxiety, it's, a, it's an anxiety experience. It's not a imagined experience. It's a real chemical change in our brain and body, mostly adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol. And then this whole idea of if we don't get over social anxiety, then we'll never be able to be happy. Well, that's kind of using fear to deal with the problem. And since fear is really the root of the problem, we can't use fear to deal with fear. It's kind of like can't fight fire with fire. It's like pulling up to a, a burning building with a flamethrower only makes it worse. So what I like to do when I'm helping people and kind of looking at any, any issue that's getting in the way of people's uh, happiness or peace of mind is look at how the brain processes information. Because what I've learned in my studies, my PhD, my research is that everything we think and feel and do and say how we react to others, how others react to us, all has to do with how the brain processes information. So I talk about basically three parts to the brain, trying not to get too complex because the brain can be pretty complex. Got the lower brain called the brain stem, middle brain is the limbic system, upper 80% of the brain, the neocortex, what I call the top of the mind. It's my philosophy like from the top of the mind. It's really all about being able to access this clear, confident, creative, compassionate part of who we are and begin to bring that to life and deal with issues. So what we need to know about these three parts of the brain is the lower brain is the anxiety brain. It's the reactive brain. It kind of goes into fight or flight whenever it's triggered. The upper brain is where we access our best, but the middle brain, the limbic system, is the scanner, processor, router part of the brain. It scans the environment and it has a tendency to pay more attention to negative information than it does positive information. Because as long as we've been on the planet, its mission on the planet has been to keep us alive. And so it has a tendency to pay attention to negative situations because they have the potential to contain a threat. But we now know really kind of social situations aren't dangerous. They're not really threatening. They just trigger that anxiety. And what we've got to recognize is the reason it's triggering that anxiety is our middle brain is misinterpreting some negative situation as dangerous and throwing us into the part of the brain that's designed to deal with danger. That's where we get angry, stressed, frustrated, experience self-doubt, try to kind of use avoidance as a way of dealing with life and just feel worse about ourselves in general. 
So what I wanna do is help people kind of rewire, reprogram this middle brain, because that's the scanner, processor, router part of the brain. We don't wanna just kind of go, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, because the lower brain goes bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. So we don't want it to kind of get into is this uh, struggle between the upper brain and the lower brain. The way to do that is begin to ask the question, okay, who am I comfortable around? You know, every situation is a social situation. Surely I'm not uncomfortable about it around everyone in my life, uh, my best friends, my, my significant other, my parents, uh, you know, just what you want to do is start thinking, of, okay, think of a social situation where you're not experiencing anxiety. Because in that moment, whatever's going on, this middle brain is not interpreting that as danger. So what you want to do is say, okay, what are the qualities and characteristics I want to bring to social situations going forward? If I could choose what they were. I encourage people when they're really wanting to have a foundation of what they can trust is to make a list of 20 qualities or characteristics of them at their best. These aren't skills, these are qualities, characteristics, compassion, caring, listening, a uh, good sense of humor, adventuresome, things like that. If you're having trouble coming up with 20, ask your friends, ask your, the people in your family, because sometimes people go 20, <laughs> might be able to do five, but the reason I want you to do 20 is we want to make sure this middle brain has a reason to have confidence in you being more successful in social situations. So we're not using fear or avoidance or negative expectation or any of that negative self-talk as a way of trying to solve the problem. We're looking toward the solution. And that is, if I'm bringing these qualities or characteristics to any situation, my job, my relationship, a party, then these folks are kind of, you know, lucky to have me at that party, lucky to have me in this job, lucky to have me as a relationship. So it gives us a sense of confidence, a place to stand with these 20 qualities or characteristics. Then, as I mentioned, think of a social situation with maybe one person that you feel comfortable with that you're feeling good. Then what you want to do is say, okay, so at that moment, my limbic system, my middle brain is, is not interpreting that as dangerous. And that's good because that's where we want to get to. Then you add one person to that, maybe another friend or family member that you feel comfortable around. Then another person, you begin to add people that you know and feel comfortable around until you get to say three or four of these folks. And hopefully that's still a situation where you feel comfortable because you know them, they know you and you feel good. If not, kind of back up to wherever you feel comfortable and stay there for a while. Kind of imagine being in that situation, bringing your best to life. Because again, the key is to rewire the brain, this middle brain specifically, because that begins to create connections, neural pathways to the upper 80% of the brain. So once you can have an imaginary experience of you being comfortable in a social situation with two or three or four of your close friends or family members, you want to add another person to that. Maybe an acquaintance, maybe not a close friend, but an acquaintance, but just that one person and begin to add people to that little bit at a time until your brain goes, whoop, that's it. <laughs> now it's dangerous. And then what you do is you back up to that one right before then and say, OK, well, I was comfortable here. Let me spend a little bit of time here in my imagination, because here's the thing. The brain doesn't know the difference between a real and an imagined event. When I'm demonstrating this in my seminars, I have people imagining biting into a lemon. So I talk about seeing the lemon, slicing the lemon in half, seeing the lemon juice run down the ham, seeing the shiny yellow pulp of the lemon, and then taking a big bite of the lemon. And almost everybody in the room is experiencing some sort of saliva muscles reaction to that imaginary experience. So here's what just happened. This imaginary experience triggered certain chemicals the saliva, the muscles, that was a chemical change in our brain and body. And what that shows us is, even though we knew we weren't really biting into a lemon, the body and the brain responded chemically as if we were. That's why worrying about a situation doesn't really serve us because it releases the same chemicals and reinforces fear and worry as a way of dealing with life. So what I like to do is come from this place of confidence. Here is who I am at my best. And then begin to imagine bringing that to life because that begins to create these new neural pathways linking the middle brain to the upper 80% of the brain because the middle brain starts experiencing, okay, this is no longer dangerous. This is what these people are no longer dangerous. Add one person to that, still no longer dangerous. Now it probably will get to a point where it goes, danger, danger. Now we know that's not true, but just saying it's not true, you shouldn't think it. It's not helpful. We just want to recognize at that point, it's the tipping point. 
So we go back to that point right before that and begin to kind of stay there for a while. Imagine being there, talking with friends, having a good time. That begins to allow that, that um, limbic system to go, okay, okay, I guess social situations aren't as dangerous as I thought they were. Now, all of this is kind of uh, interesting because it's, it's not like we were born with social anxiety, you know. Little babies aren't laying in their bassinet going, there's too many people in the room. So what we want to do is to recognize that has been kind of created through experience. Unfortunately, school can do this, you know, being asked to stand up in front of the school and read some project that we weren't prepared for. And, you know, folks who have like Asperger's syndrome or on the autism scale have probably been criticized and bullied and shamed by that. So, gosh, we've got these old experiences. It's understandable what we want to do is begin to have more influence in how our brain is interpreting social situations so that we can begin to go into them in a more effective and enjoyable way. This is what I love to do. I love to help people kind of use my life from the top of the mind philosophy, where I show people how to actually shift from that anxious brain to that clear, confident, creative brain, and then how to stay there. I talk about how to rewire the brain in a relatively short amount of time, and then how to deal with other people who are kind of being upset with us or difficult with us. And I get to go around the world teaching people how to do that. If that's something you would like me to do with you or your organization, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, or just Google Bill Crawford PhD. I'll come up on the first page. Hit the contact button. Let me know what you're interested in. Love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, I hope you're liking these videos. I try to post one every week and use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to create some, hopefully, some good information about how to help you create the life you want. If you're liking it, please hit the like button, you know, share it with your friends if you think it's valuable. You know how Pinterest and YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and iTunes love it when you like it. So that's what I do. I get to share my philosophy about how the brain works and how to have more influence that with people. And I'd love to do that with you. So until next time, here's to you bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the future.